So let's learn about tensions in ropes and strings. Start over here. Uh, I know that tension is actually in newtons, but we're gonna work in grams here because it's just a lot easier. That one right there is a 200 gram mass. You should be able to almost see that. That's a 200 gram mass. And notice that this string right here, this, uh, this spring scale reads 200 grams. Huh, that one reads 200 grams and is attached to another one. Let's see what down this one says. Right about 200 grams. Okay, and there's a 200 gram mass on it as well. Now, what does this prove? This one over here proves that the tension in a rope is the same everywhere. And notice that you have a 200 here, you have 200 there. Some people would think that this tension here on this rope would be 400. That's not the way this works. I'll show you this on paper as well, but in order for that mass not to move, Okay, there's 200, there's mg, well, we're gonna divide by g on everything. So there's 200 grams down, you know, or the force of 200 grams down, then this must be 200 grams. For this to not move, there must be 200 grams pulling that way and 200 grams pulling this way. For that one not to move, 200 grams, 200 grams, etc. So just take it a point along the, the tent, along the rope or the string and figure out what the tension must be. Now here, there's another 200 gram mass and it reads, no surprise, 200 grams. But this time it splits into two. And that says 100 and 100, which is being held up by a 100 gram mass. I'm not sure if I can get in there enough that you can see that, 100 gram mass. And this one is just attached to a fixture, okay? Now, again, you might think that that's 100 being pulled by 100, nope, this is 100 because that's how much it takes to hold, keep that mass from moving. And so this one, if that's 100, then this attachment point is also 100, okay? Now over here, I have a couple of masses attached to a ramp. Now they're the same 200 as we've been doing, and we're gonna lift this up and take a look at what they say. This one down here says around 200, right? Because it's only holding up a 200 gram mass, simple enough. Well, this one up here reads more than 400. Now, why doesn't it read 400? Well, because it's got to hold this up as well. If I had zeroed it so that it didn't, it didn't read the mass of the spring scale, that would read 400 because there's two masses attached. Now, watch what happens as I lower this down. Notice that the amount that it's supporting is decreasing. And the one on the bottom will have to support less than the one on top. Now, uh, if you remember your trigonometry, then you should know that this is M, this is G sine theta. If you're actually talking about the force, it's MG, MG sine theta because sine decreases with angle. So let's show what was going on on the ramp. So first, some basic trigonometry. If this is our angle from the x-axis and this is our vector that has a size of H, and I picked H just for the hypotenuse. Then let's go ahead and make our vector components, there would be h in the y direction, there would be h in the x direction. Notice in the y direction, that's opposite, so this would be h sine theta, and in the x direction would be h cosine theta. Now, as this angle increases, notice that the y component gets bigger. So I'm gonna write increases with theta, and this decreases with theta. And on the ramp, doesn't it increase with the angle as you raise that ramp up? Right? Doesn't it pull down the ramp more? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, if you really want to see what this looks like with the trigonometry and all that stuff, I have a, uh, I have a video called Objects on Ramps and Angles and so forth. I use a protractor, the whole thing. To make this really simple though, let's start off. As the, so once again, as theta increases, the force down the ramp increases, so equals sine theta. So this force down the ramp is mg sine theta. Then in order to keep this from moving, the tension in the rope must be mg sine theta. All the way up until you get to that point right there, which must pull with mg sine theta as well. Now just real quickly for the trigonometry. If this is mg and this is the normal force, then you shift your axes 
so that this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, and hopefully you can see that as you close this down, this two will shrink. Therefore, these two angles are the same. If that's true, then this must be cosine and this must be sine. But please watch that video. We'll be much clearer about that. I have a couple of examples here. A little crudely drawn, I'm sorry, but this is quick. So again, realizing that I'm just gonna get rid of the, I guess I can do the MG and whatever. So it depends on if these are, are reading mass or reading uh, force. <clears throat> so here you've got MG pulling down. If it's acceleration equals zero, if it's not moving, then the tension here must be mg. Well, then if this point is not moving, then the tension here must be mg. So what you need to do is take points everywhere. So if we take a point here and we do the force diagram, there's gonna be two forces, they're both gonna be mg. Well, then take this point here then this one is pulling, sorry, at this point right here, there must be mg, mg. So this must be mg. Well, let's take this point here. If this is pulling with mg, then this must be pulling with mg, and this spring scale must read mg, or if you're reading mass, g. You keep following that all the way around. If we take this point right here, then that must be mg, this must be mg. We take this point right here, mg, mg. The tension in the rope everywhere is mg. Now, if it's reading, uh, if it's reading only mass, then it reads m, m, and m. Okay. Now over here, now that we've understood that, if this is mg, then this tension must be mg. Then this tension must be mg. What about these two? Since it splits, this must be mg over two and mg over two. This point right here, there's mg over two, mg over two, which equals mg, etc. This rope must be mg, this tension must equal mg, and this must read mg. Notice that's the same if you have one mass or two. Now you might think that this is way simple, why in the world am I wasting my time on this? Well, I will tell you honestly that some of my smartest kids on the test miss this. So here's the, here's the trick. One, the tension, uh, the tension equals the reading of the spring scale. Pretend the spring scale isn't there. Whatever the tension in the rope has to be, that's the reading of the spring scale. I guess I should have said zero, just like the laws of thermodynamics will go backwards. T is the same throughout the rope. Or string. So in other words, if it's T here, it's T everywhere. Now in a real string, that's not true, but we're going to pretend they're really light, etc. Um, other things, I'm trying to think if there's another, oh yeah, number two, pick a point. If not moving, or not accelerating, but since we're doing statics, not moving, then the forces uh, left must equal forces right, etc. Do this throughout the rope. Or I guess along the rope. And it will lead you to the exact answer and it must be true. Now let me show you another example here. Let me go ahead and turn this over and let's do another ramp problem. So uh, that's a little harder. So I'll do it here. So. There we go. So let's put a big old ramp on here. All right. Let's say that there's a mass down here of M. Let's say the coefficient of friction equals zero, so it's, there's no issues there. Then we have a spring scale here. These will be massless spring scales, unlike what we saw uh, on the ramp. And then we have two here. And that's not even a rectangle, but it'll be fine. Okay, there's one there. They come together. Except, or what the heck, let's put another mass here. And then let's put a uh, pulley here, and then we'll come down, put one here, and attach it to the ground, okay? Now this one, because this is theta, <clears throat> then the force down the ramp must be mg sine theta. 
then this point right here, there must be mg sine theta, mg sine theta. So the scale reads mg sine theta, or if you're only reading mass, would equal m sine theta. Then each of these, mg sine theta over two, because it splits this force, because this point is not moving. So the down the ramp and up the ramp must be equal. Likewise here, this must be mg sine theta over two, mg sine theta over two. Then this one right here must equal mg sine theta. <clears throat> now, we've got another, well, now we've got an issue here. This one is gonna pull down with mg sine theta, and you have this pulling down with mg sine theta. So this tension here equals two mg sine theta because you've added another mass. Follow the rope, the tension of the rope is the same everywhere. If you take this point, it must be two mg sine theta, two mg sine theta. So this one reads two mg sine theta. And the attachment point at the bottom pulls or attaches with two mg sine theta. That's how you do ropes uh, how you do spring scales in ropes and what they read in static equilibrium.